Okay, so uh, Amnesia Fortnite is coming up, people. I've mentioned this a little bit before. The current time being, well, it's not coming up super soon. We've got to talk about it because this year it's going to be a very special Amnesia Fortnite. We're really um, looking forward to trying this experiment, having a public Amnesia Fortnite, which is uh, a lot of details have to be worked out. But we are going to actually have our Amnesia Fortnite. Wait, does anyone not know what Amnesia Fortnite is? Tony, hey. So, so <laughs> uh, three times so far we've stopped what we were working on. You forget what we're working on for two weeks. That's where the name comes from. We split the company into small groups, sometimes four or five groups, and each group has to make a game in two weeks. This time we're going to actually, instead of me picking who the AF projects are going to be, uh, we're going to let people make their own pitch videos and put them on the internet and let the public pick. <laughs> which ones we make. <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're talking about doing it in coordination with the Humble Indie Bundle people to actually sell access to this. So they pay, and then they can vote. Watch the videos. Two players are going to be documenting everything. And... If you're not photogenic, you're fucked. <laughs> Have <laughs> you watched our documentary Wait, ever? The came out of, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, we put them out there. So I mostly just want everyone who uh, would like to pitch an idea to start thinking about your idea. Start actually kind of letting it coalesce in your head what you'd like it to be. Okay. So if you have ideas, think about them now. It's time for your image Fortnite pitch. Let's hear it. Uh, it's a golf game where you get to drive the golf carts. It, this is a driving game. Um, it's called Shine Rum. You're basically delivering moonshine. My game is called Black Lake. The tale of a girl that hunts down the nightmares of animals in a forest. So I think the setting is super neat and the characters me and the world will look beautiful and stuff. And I just think, I really want to think through the actual nuts and bolts gameplay. You're like, what are those things? Do you know what those are yet? Not fully. Not fully. The game idea is called Space Base or Space Base DF9. <laughs> if you like. Okay. Um, and uh, it's a game where you build a base for aliens to live on and mm -hmm. they do little jobs and stuff. And uh, it's all a simulation. So rather than like it being uh, a story driven kind of thing, um, you just watch their little, you build your base and change things about it and you get to peer into their little lives and different interesting little stories emerge out of their simulated lives. Basically, uh, the, the like bottom line of the game is that it's a physics puzzler. It's like uh, Double Dragon, Golden Axe, Castle Crashers, etc. all these sort of, it's like a side view brawling game with your friends. Ambient platform exploration in the style of eco or journey. Yeah, I like that. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to go for mood rather yeah. than detail and story. Kind of game I like. Yeah, me too. The, um, the main idea that I had was I really like the old Zelda games, um, especially the original NES Zelda, uh, because it had this sort of like sense of exploration and wonder that extended way beyond um, like, you know, other games from, from that era for me. Um, and uh, there, there's also this thing that I loved about uh, when I was a kid, when I was like first, you know, downloading ROMs illegally and playing them through emulators. But it, with the, a lot of the early emulators, they came with this thing that would actually like look at the, let you look at the memory um, of the, the ROM, and you could like search for values that were contained inside of it that would control various aspects of the game. It's like how the old game genies worked and that kind of stuff. And it was kind of one of my introductions into programming uh, was was trying to hack on these games and, and sort of explore through them and like find where the the health was so they could lock it in place and freeze it. Um, or like, you know, things that would let you control the character's location so you could warp between screens and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was like, I, I sort of had the realization recently that like there's this overlap between sort of exploring a game in that way and exploring it and that sort of like, they, they activate the same sort of excitement um, in my mind. Uh, and so like, I was thinking it would be really cool to make a game that actually just combined those two ideas, right? Like that had the exploration component uh, from the sort of like top-down Zelda aspect and then also had this exploration component from having you like inspect the game while you're playing it. Um, but I got a name. Hack and Slash. Perfect. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> Do another one. Okay. Autonomous is a futurist... Ugh. Autonomous is a first-person sandbox construction game set in a futuristic junkyard world. 
Cloud Pre is a multiplayer racing game where you grapple and repel between dynamic 3D clouds. Kaiju Piledriver is a Godzilla-inspired roguelike action game where you control a giant rubber-suited monster destroying corporate cities. Perfect. Okay, nice. Solve top-down 2D action puzzles to rescue amazing creatures across the galaxy in Critterverse. Echelon is a cross between text adventure and radio plays where you capture and analyze top secret surveillance recordings. Okay. Oh man, this is, this is crazy. I don't know how Tim does it all the time. Silent But Deadly is a smell-based stealth game where you have to escape an office building after you pooped your pants. Flopulous is a 100% physics-driven platformer about the dramatic escape of a self-inflating blob. <laughs> 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 All right, one more. <laughs> you look like you're having fun with that. Right? Yeah, it is pretty fun, actually. <laughs> we, like we just say, like we don't know what's going to happen in Ninja Fortnite. That's one of the selling points of it. Is like yeah. we don't know what's going to happen. We might get a bunch of crap. We might get like a, a bunch of games, and they all, they all get made. Right. Or we might just forget but this maybe, whole thing ever. Yeah. 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 It's a unique thing for the game industry, and it's so fun to see that like just a ton of creativity bottled up into a tiny short span mm -hmm. of time, and seeing people just like bust their ass to come up with this amazing thing in, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and being able to witness that and feel like you took part in it and that you saw it as it was happening. We're ready? Can you guys hear me? Can anyone hear me? How do we know if they're actually talking? Oh yeah, we need to get the website up. This isn't live, right? Of course. We are live. Okay, I'm just gonna start. Um, so what did you guys do over Thanksgiving all day? Amnesia Fortnite voting has ended, and we're ready to start kicking off the team selection process, which is exciting. And we're going to do that by having our project leaders come up here and pitch their games to you. And then afterwards, you will scurry back to your desks and fill out a form ranking the projects of what order you want to work on them in. And uh, Ace has been calculating the team sizes for each one. And it looks like our, uh, we'll be able to cover the initial, the top four, and also be able to do one more extra project. So five projects all together is what we're going to be making. Uh, those five people will be coming up here and pitching them to you right now. You guys, uh, the summary is, you know, uh, it was in the video, but just to repeat it a little bit. Uh, you are, uh, it's a first person game, and you're sort of lost in this retro, futuristic, 80s inspired junkyard world. And the primary thing that you're doing in this world is you're scavenging for found objects, primitives, and constructing automatons. And once you activate these automatons, they're self-directed based on some uh, inputs and energy allocation that you do. And you have to use these guys to survive the world and uh, explore it. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I mean, I, you know, I didn't honestly had no idea what would appeal to people. I thought, well, maybe it won't. But um, I believe in the idea. I think it'd be fun. It's a little different. I like to try something different every time. I didn't want to do another game that was set in the same style as uh, any of the other games I worked on. So, so yeah. Uh, OK. I'm on a screen. Um, so yeah, Space Base. Uh, it's a sim game. So uh, and it's and it's a fairly like it's a it's a sim game where whatever notion of story that we have is actually driven by that sim. There's not an authored story with a script and characters and stuff that starts before the sim happens. It's really just you know it's like Sim City or The Sims or something where really what you're doing is really what 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 the story of that game is and all that. As far as just general gamer interest, I had no idea. Um, and, and yeah, and there were ideas that were, you know, just a lot more like, that I thought were really interesting and well presented and very crowd pleasing that didn't make it. So yeah. who knows? I, I have no understanding of, of <laughs> the success of the thing, uh, except maybe f just a guess that, um, you know, saying sci-fi dwarf fortress turns a magical key in many a nerd's mind. So the white birch, uh, I'm a big fan of Eco and Journey, and so I, I, I like the spirit and the mood of those games. And so I was trying to pitch something that kind of came from the same sort of place, but didn't necessarily look or play exactly like those two games. I was really flattered, and I, and I felt like I tapped into, you know, maybe a bunch of people who felt the same way that I did, that there weren't we weren't getting the games that we wanted and um, maybe waiting for The Last Guardian is just a little bit too hard. Uh, sorry guys. Hey. 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 Yeah. <laughs> It, 
the it, it was a weird idea, like, and it's it's something that I thought was going to be pretty niche. Um, and I, honestly, I think probably it still is. I think it just kind of got lucky that it was kind of the right audience for it. Right? It's like you know, Double Fine fans, you know, like something that that sort of you know. You know, games that sort of like turn some kind of element on its side that, that sort of separates them from normal games. Like you know, that that weirdness I think is an important touch in most Double Fine games. Uh, plus, like I think the Humble Bundle audience like has a lot of people who are developers and so would be interested in something that kind of like lets you look behind the scenes of the game or um, you know just people who are into kind of nerdy programmery things. Like obviously, like it's a big sort of like Linux contingent of people who follow that stuff. And so I think I think both of those things probably helped me out a, a, a bit. Um. This is a game that I really showed Tim before it was a game. And he looked at me and he said, I really like what you've got going on here, but it's just art. <laughs> it's not much to it. And it's not really a game. And since then, he's caught me getting coffee down there. And he doesn't bring up weather. He doesn't bring up how's it going. He says, where's your game? And I would really like to thank him because he has caused me to think about that. And he has caused me to go back and keep working on this. And I'm pretty happy with where Black Lake is. I was happy to be anywhere in it. Like, I, after the point where I watched all 23 of those videos with everybody, I had no clue that mine would go anywhere as higher than any of them. I mean, mine has s strengths to it, I see, that aren't in other ones, but it has a lot of weaknesses compared to a lot of the other ones. And it's, I mean, this is just a huge amount of learning for what people vibe off of and how to sell yourself that's really pretty interesting. Black Lake is not a game. It's a small image on a huge TV. That, just... <laughs> that is it, everybody. Um... The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to leave here and go to your desk. There's an email from Misa that will tell you how to get to the forum, where you fill out what projects you'd like to work on and why. Uh, OK, so uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks for coming. See you later. Bye. So everybody's ranked Space Space, Autonomous, Hack and Slash, White Birch, and Black Lake in the order that they want. And I asked everybody to not just put their top project, but actually rank each one. Yeah. And also say why. Sometimes the reason why they don't want to be on a project is because maybe they heard the project lead say, oh, I don't need anybody, you know, uh -huh. of this skill set. And they say, oh, it sounds like a great project, but I'm not needed, so I'm going to rank it lower. Okay. Uh, and actually, for the most part, that worked. I think we have um, mostly people in their first or second choices. Okay. Uh, I think people had a hard time ranking the projects and choosing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, That's good. That's yeah. great. I think those are great teams. I think everyone's pretty much, a lot of them just are really natural. Some of them are kind of surprising, but I think they make sense. All right. I'm JP. Uh, <laughs> I was a designer on the cave, and uh, I'm uh, happy to introduce this awesome team that we've got for to make Space Base DF9. I heard that you know a lot of programmers were were interested in working on it, mm -hmm. and it's it's because it's such you know it's like this sort of technical you know anything that's that's got a strong simulation element is going to fascinate people who think about systems or es especially think about code and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, welcome. I'm glad to have you all. I think it's going to be great. It's going to be cool. I think we can do something cool, and uh, let's try and enjoy this because. It's going to be crazy. But We're trying to do something that is cohesive and small. I'd rather do something that's simple and small and feels like it's a whole than something that just hints at what might be if we ever got a chance to finish it. Because, you know, these two weeks might be all that ever happens in this project, so I'd like something that we can all take away and want to play over and over and just enjoy as a, a little chunk of something special. So cohesion is the big thing. You're putting a lot of I'm super stoked, guys. This is exactly the team that I wanted to put together. So thank you guys for joining me. Um, really? really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> One of the ways in which I am dumb is that I thought I could program the whole thing myself. Um, and that's ridiculous. Like, I actually, when I was sitting on the plane on the flight home, like, laying out the, the uh, puzzle design and the flow and all that kind of thing, I was like, what, what did I get myself into? <laughs> 
we just snuck our game into the <laughs> top four somehow. Um, yeah, uh, I just got to meet all these people who I usually see around the office but haven't really uh, worked with in a long time, some of them. So I'm super excited. Uh, we have 13 people that we're going team. to. This is the biggest team. Yeah. And it's so the, the best game. It's, yeah. it's 13 people, but they're all the best people. So Whoa. it's going to be pretty good. Sweet. I'm pretty you excited. And I believe that the team is filling oh. in. Oh my god, this is a really loud team. This is going to be an obnoxious yeah. team. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is the autonomous team. About? I don't know where Lee is. Is Lee here? I'm right here. Oh my god. Fearless leader. Lee is here. We are looking at. The most beautiful, sleek, sexy team ever assembled. Not only in Double Fine, but the entire game industry. Yeah, we team should, Autonomous. We should all quit and start our own studio. Oh! oh that's that's defecting. We're defecting. This is it. Wow. Yeah. Close the door. Oh, there's no door. Are you from Texas? What's up? Yeah. All right. You really don't have much time to debate. And the beauty of that is a lot of times um, with a game that's better just to try it and see. Than, than overthink it or over debate it. I'm not saying you don't want to plan and don't want to think, but um, when the Amnesia Fortnite timeline, you only have a limited window for that. And I'd rather that be us responding to things when they're up on the screen and seeing how they're working and come up with ideas how to make it better. Yeah. Like if it's black screen wind and we're not telling the player anything and they move their mouse and it's like ding, ding, ding. Like, oh, they move my mouse, but still they're just hearing sounds. But like they start hitting the button and then like a piece of the black comes away. It's the type of thing because it sets the tone of like mystery. It's like what's going on. It sounds awesome. I think we thing. should do it. It so, sounds awesome. So I think that's the way to think of it. Less so than like a specific like I'm in a junkyard. I'm trying to get this thing done. You're like, well, what? What am I? Who am I? I want this game to be about experimentation and mystery right off the front, and that includes how it's presented to the player and how they discover these systems. How hammy do you want me to go? Do you want like Ed Nine Thousand versus you know a little tweeter robot, and like have like true personalities in their voices and stuff, or I think, um, so I think Ed, Ed 209 yeah. is great. I think Old Bob from Black Hole is too far. Okay. Right? I think it sounds like <laughs> Slim, right? So I think it's, boy, that was a geeky metaphor, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, everybody it. got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because I think we do want, it's, uh, people should smile when they play. I mean, it's not, it's not a horror game. You know, it should be tense. And there's some scary moments maybe when the big, you know, Ed, Ed 209 is a great example because he was kind of goofy, but he was still intimidating. Mm -hmm. They had the big hum, you know, <laughs> when he's on. Uh, and uh, okay. yeah, the voice is great. Um, and that feels very 80s to me, be, to, to be a little heavy-fisted with the... Heavy-fisted, heavy-handed with the... <laughs> That's 80, 80s is heavy-fisted, yeah. nowadays we're just heavy-handed. Yeah. <laughs> I think so I got a labyrinth, I, I a little tried. lichen yeah. on the wall. Any, yeah. any yeah. bit that we can do of getting this, like, with a hint of labyrinth, without the magic pants. <laughs> <laughs> or... <laughs> it seems like the team likes the, 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 the kind of idea of the vibes that I'm, that I'm kind of starting the game as, but it's definitely a jumping off point and to really make it a team effort, which, I mean, the most successful AFs I've been involved with have been everybody just being on board and having a, a really strong focus of what the game has a direction to become. Right on. I don't know how much we want this to be like an adventure game where it's about finding the right item for the right combination and situation and you know matching everything together. And that could be cool, but I don't know if that gets away from your initial vision. I think there's a point that we hit it that we've added too many things to the game. You know, it's really and and you. It sometimes it's nice to like go to that point and pass that and then look at which new ideas are worth it and which ones yeah. are, are, are the ones that you want to roll back. And just, I, I want to keep it simple. Seems like it at it its core, it's, it's clue hunt plus tag or avoidance. Right. So I'm hunting through these clues. Yeah. You have many different tools to help you to do that. And then you're just trying to avoid the bad things. Yeah. Um, and there's and a then, payoff at the end. And that, uh, the end. Involves I mean, you really doing something here. very creative and uh, right. lets you go further on. Yep. It's not just my untested hypothesis anymore. Mm -hmm. It's now being sculpted and changed by all these people who I trust a lot and really enjoy working with. And that's fantastic, you know? I mean, because now it's like, it's already a way better idea than if it had just been something that I had been noodling away on in my spare time. Yeah. Yeah, like, right, just like somebody dies and what happens to them. <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, yeah. First, we, 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 
we deny. Yeah, where does the, body, where does the body go? Right. Um, <laughs> you, have to, you have to actually put the body on the space. You have, you have to go to an airlock. Like you to yeah, you have to order a guy to pick up the body, take it to an airlock. So that's a job. That's clearly a job then. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So the guy who gives you're the guy not doing that every single. The course. guy who gives everybody a Spock funeral. Yeah. Right. Basically. <laughs> cool. Cool. This is super exciting. I'm really, yeah. really. Yeah. Excited. Wow. Yeah. yeah Thanks for picking this, JP. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. No. Uh, We'll have something good, I think. I think, but don't quote me on that. I really don't know. We'll we'll, we'll see in two weeks. I think all of these ideas are things that the people who are making them are very passionate about and would love to turn into full games. Um, but I think you know the great thing about Amnesia Fortnite is that you actually have to go through the process of proving that that's a good idea, right? Um, and uh, and that it's actually as interesting as it appears to be in your mind. Um, the who knows if this is that? We'll see. Everybody will get to see. Yeah.